In this video, I'm going to show you how to downgrade your next gen version of Fallout 4 so that you can use mods that require the older version, including Fallout London. Now, there is an automatic downgrader created by the Fallout London team, and I did try it. Unfortunately, there were a number of issues that came up, and whilst I did manage to get past quite a few of them, after a couple of hours of downgrading, one error occurred that basically terminated the entire process. And I know I'm not alone in having issues with this. So, in this video, I'm going to be covering how you manually downgrade Fallout 4. Now, the instructions on how to downgrade can be found in a number of places, including the Fallout 4 London website itself. But I do know quite a few people find walls of text like this quite intimidating, especially if it looks a little technical and nerdy, which this sort of instruction does. But don't panic, I'm going to take you through this step by step, and believe it or not, it's actually pretty easy once you see it broken down. Now, there are a couple of things that you should do before downgrading, regardless of whether you're using the automatic downgrader or manually downgrading. The first thing is to stop the game auto-updating. So go along to Fallout 4 in your Steam library and right-click. Go along to Properties, click on Updates, and where it says Automatic Updates, make sure this is set to only update this game when I launch it. This will mean that the game will only update when you click here, when you try to start the game from Steam, and you should not be doing that anyway. The second thing that I'm going to recommend is that if you're running mods and you are not using Mod Organizer 2 to organize those mods, you should disable them. It's not strictly speaking necessary, but unless you are running Mod Organizer 2, you will need to redeploy your mods once you finish the downgrade anyway, and you're going to want to test the game in its vanilla state just to make sure the downgrade process functioned correctly. If you're using Vortex, the easiest way to do this is to actually just switch to a vanilla profile, which will just undeploy all the mods you've got installed. If you don't see the Profiles tab here in Vortex, go along to Settings and check down below Advanced where it says Enable Profile Management and make sure this is selected. If this is the first time you've had the profiles open, you will have to create a new vanilla profile using Add Fallout 4 Profile. In fact, if you're going to be installing Fallout London, you probably want a Fallout London profile anyway, and I'm going to recommend that if you do this, you want the profile to have its own save games and to have its own settings. I'm going to click Save there. I now have this profile right here. And then all I do is click Enable, and that's it. The game is now completely and utterly vanilla. Now, for the actual downgrading process itself, I'm going to be using the text that is on the Fallout London site. However, to make things a little easier for you, I will copy the relevant parts to the description of this video so you can copy and paste them from there. Now, we start this process by opening the Steam console. And to do this, you will need to copy this snippet of code, steam colon slash slash open slash console. You can then either press the Windows key and the R key at the same time and paste this command into this run window and click OK, which will open the console, or you can even copy it straight into the browser itself it will then ask if you want to open the application, and you just click Open to confirm. Then you go back to the text, and you will need to find a whole list of these Download Depot commands. Uh, I'm going to start with the first one. You need to select all of this, copy, go back to the console, and Control v to paste it, and then press Enter. It will then start to download that particular depot. It could take some time depending on the size. Now you need to go back to the text and select the next line. Once again, copy, go back to the console and repeat 
this. You're going to need to do this for all of the lines in the text, at least the first four, if you're just downgrading pure Fallout 4 with no DLC. If you have any of the DLC, you will need to download the relevant links for that particular DLC. If you are downgrading specifically for Fallout London, you must have all of the DLC anyway, so that means every single one of these lines needs to be copied and pasted into the console so you get all of the files that you need. And luckily, you can actually load all of these commands up at the same time, and I am not completely sure if it downloads them all at the same time or queues them. It's probably not going to speed the process up because the more you're downloading at once, the slower each download will be. But it does mean you can go off and have some food and do something else while all of these downloads are occurring. Now, at the time of making this video, there are 15 of these depots or depots if you are American, and you'll need to wait until you get a depot download complete message for each of them before you continue on to the next step. I've now got that, so I'm ready to move on. So we now have all of the files we need for the downgrade. I'll show you where those are in a second. Right now, I need to open up the games installation folder. And for me, this is on my F drive under Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4. For some of you, the game installation folder might be marked Fallout 4 space G-O-T-Y, which stands for Game of the Year. And that's just Fallout 4 with all of the DLC. Now, the Fallout London site suggests deleting all of the files in this folder. And you can do that. That will work just fine. You do need to make space for the downgraded version after all. However, if you're a little nervous about deleting all of those files at this point and you want to keep them as a backup just in case something went horribly wrong, you can go back up and then rename this folder and just add space next gen or something like that after it. Then all you need to do is right click somewhere over this side of the Windows Explorer, select new folder, and then just type Fallout 4, if that was the name of the folder that uh, your game is installed in, or Fallout 4 space G-O-T-Y. And then I now have an empty Fallout 4 folder. This is where I'm going to put the new downgraded version. What I'm going to do now is go up to the common folder. I'm gonna click here, and then I'm going to right click this new empty folder that I have created and select open in new window so that I can have this open at the same time as the common folder, and then over here on Steam, Steam Apps Common, I'm gonna go one up again to Steam Apps. And this time I'm going into Content. I need to find a folder marked APP underscore 377160. It will probably be the only folder you've got. You go in there and you should have 15 folders, one for each of the depots that you downloaded. What you will need to do now is go into each of these folders, select everything that is there, and cut from this folder and paste in this folder. It should be instantaneous because it's in on the same drive. If you would like to keep these files as a backup, you can, but it will increase the time it takes to do this. You're gonna need to just essentially go through every single one of these, select all of the files, then hit Control X, which is the same as doing cut and paste over here. Do this for every single folder, Control X. And if it asks you to overwrite, just do yes. It's probably going to be a folder name. Sometimes it's not though. If you have been cutting the files rather than copying them, one way you can check that you've taken all of the files is to select all of them and just right click and select properties and it will say size zero bytes. So I now know I have all of the files copied across. There you go. 
93 gigabytes. And believe it or not, that's the downgrade complete. However, there is one last step that the Fallout London page recommends to ensure that Steam does not update your game now. And for that, you're going to have to go up two folders to Steam Apps, and then you're going to be finding a file that you can find in the text called app manifest underscore 377160. You can select all of this and then copy it to make life easy for yourself. Put it in the search up top. And you're looking for a file called app manifest underscore 377160.acf. There may be other files, but this is the one you want. So I'm going to left click to select it, then right click to open the menu, select properties, and then set read only, apply, and OK. This will prevent Steam from being able to update. And that's it. The game is now downgraded and Steam will be unable to update even if you do something by mistake that would trigger it. Now at this point, you should check that everything is okay by running the game, but you're probably going to have to run the game through the script extender because the chances are if you tried to run the executable or the launcher executable, an error would be thrown as Steam attempted to update. There are actually ways around that. You can start the game this way and it won't update, but that is out of scope for this video. And let's face it, if you've downgraded your game, it's because you're going to mod it anyway, quite probably with Fallout London. So the way we're going to test this is the proper way. I'm going to open my mod manager, in this case, Vortex, and I'm going to enable the script extender. I've currently got two versions installed. I want to enable this one because this is for the downgraded game. That's it, script extender is now there and I'm going to run the game from this shortcut. And there you have it. Downgraded game. I should get no message on the menu about the next gen update. There you go. Success. Oh, and if you're going to be installing Fallout London now via the installer, don't forget to disable the script extender because the installer comes with a version of the script extender, so there's no need. Of course, there are other ways to install Fallout London, and I'm going to be covering both the installer and the mod manager method of installing Fallout London in my next video. You're more than welcome to join me for that one. I look forward to seeing you there. And until then, remember as always, have fun.